Welcome to the Be A Boss Coaching mini podcast series, Nine to Grime. In this podcast series, I will be talking with women of color, BIPOC, and queer entrepreneurs who are both juggling a nine to five and running a business at the same time. In this series, I aim to shine a light on the many different ways that people balance their corporate careers with their entrepreneurial aspirations. Each episode will delve into their challenges, successes, and most importantly, what they do from the time they get up in the morning until they go to bed at night. I know firsthand how tough this balance act can be since I left my job a little too too soon and I learned lessons along the way. I hope that with this series you can get as much insight and strategies that will help you in your personal entrepreneurial journey and corporate career. Thanks for tuning in and I can't wait for you to hear from these incredible entrepreneurs who have shared their time and their wisdom. I hope you enjoy. Okay, we are on. Hi Jessica. <laughs> Hi Jessica. I am so excited for you to be here. Thank you for giving me the time to do this series where we talk about how different business owners run their business and also have their full-time job. And I remember seeing you and meeting you and thinking for the first time when you talked about your business, I was like, that is so cool. Like the the fact that you create your own feminine products, which we will get into. And then you also work. I think one thing I don't really know is where you work. So I'm excited to learn more about you. But let's start let's start with your name and the name of your business and we'll take it from there. Yeah. So I'm Jessica Villatoro. I go by Jess J E S S and I am the founder of Jess Period, but most importantly, I am a menstrual health advocate and a menstruator myself. And I do juggle the life between being a small business owner or a new entrepreneur, very much a new entrepreneur, and managing my corporate America job. Yeah, that's incredible. So thank you so much. Yeah, so I love Jess Period. I think what you do and also not just the fact that you have a, a product, but that you are an advocate for menstrual health. And I love when you said I'm a menstruator because I never had considered myself as such, and I'm like, yeah, that, I'm a menstruator too. So I think that's, I love that you reclaim that as a way to advocate for people who menstruate. So can you tell us more about your business and what it does and how it serves the community? Yeah, so I started Just Period. In Just Period, I make a line of handmade menstruation products. So specifically pads, because I was really never taught on how to use a tampon and really all the women in my family only have used um, pads. That was kind of like the only menstrual product that was introduced to me and I stuck with it. And now I make those from my home along with panty liner. So that's why I call it a, a line because I have kind of assortments of period related product. Okay. Okay. Awesome. And what inspired you to start this line of menstrual period, uh, menstrual period products? What, what motivated you to start that? So I, I actually just got asked this question last week at an event. The question was like, what was the catalyst for starting this? Mm -hmm. And I reflected in that moment, like, Really, it was many stages in my life as a young girl and growing up to adulthood and like fully coming into my 30 years and realizing like many things in my life had actually triggered just period. It, recently, I did go through a life changing experience at the age of 30, but it was kind of more an accumulation of many things. Basically, it's just like the bomb erupted mm. when I was 30, but it was many things growing up. I'll start with like my youngest years as a teen, I suffered through period poverty and I didn't know period poverty existed. I didn't know the term existed until I was 30. So that also made me realize that I had little control over my body and something so personal like my period that I didn't even own to it. Mm -hmm. So serious in events of womanhood and growing up girl, a brown girl, cultural stigma, just many things that went into my why of just period. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm glad that you were able to find a way to address the changes that were happening for you. And I'm sure that you had a moment that were like, I'm not the only one, you know, yeah. that had experienced all of these changes and wanted to bring that to other menstruators. So I'm glad that, that 
it came to be this line of products. And okay, now that you've been in business, I'm curious when you started this product and how did it fit into your current life? I guess we can go into the fact that you do have a full-time job. So to the extent that you can or even want, can you tell us what your full-time job is currently right now? Yeah, so I've been in supply chain now for 12 years, I believe, between purchasing and planning. And now my role has changed into being a program manager within supply chain, either purchasing or planning, but more as a project approach, managing programs and such, but still within uh, supply chain. I work for a company that makes electric vehicles, Mm -hmm. specifically trucks. And I hope Mm -hmm. that's a big hint uh, to tell you what the brand is that's that's my nine to five it is a very exciting market to be in it is very much a startup but it comes with its own own challenges and my background had been mostly in aerospace so it was a shift to me to move from aerospace airplanes to move into the vehicle the automotive industry and to top it off it was the electric vehicle industry which is very new still yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. And so you've been doing that for 12 years. And um, my supply chain 12 years, but in the EV industry, I've been there the last three years. Okay. All right. And then recently now moved into project management within the supply chain. Okay. Yep. That sounds very exciting. It sounds like there's a lot to do. <laughs> there's a lot going on. And I'm curious then how when as you were transitioning into project management and then began just period what was that like for you what what did you think about when you were thinking about just period and how it would start to fit into your current life yeah so i do have to say that their big benefit and even i would call it a privilege to be working from home because that cuts out a lot of commute time A lot of time that maybe, for example, if I went to an office and then I had to do like my 30 minutes or my one hour of lunch, that's like another hour embedded on my work schedule that I can actually allocate now to my business because I don't have to commute. I don't have to go to an office. So now all of those hours go back to me that I can be productive for just period. So I I think that has been like the biggest advantage and what really allowed me to invest time after uh, my work schedule is over to just period because I'm a early bird. So I I start my day very early off 6 a.m. I'm a coffee drinker. I love my coffee. I get my coffee. I start reading my emails from work on my phone. Okay. Start starting my day. What do I need to do first? How is my day going to look like? And then predicting, okay, um, I'm going to do all of these tasks during this time. This is how am I, I'm going to accommodate myself. And then this is when I'm going to log off to then invest time in, in desk period. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm fairly new. So I have been doing this for a year and a half now. So I, I'm still adjusting. I'm still making changes to what works best because also my job goes through changes and obviously it requires for me to invest more time to learn maybe on the new tasks that I'm giving and it takes time away from just period. So it's just for me, it's been kind of balancing, but also making it a mission to invest time in just period. Because if I don't give it the priority, I'm just never going to work on it. You know, I'm just going to log off and say I'm exhausted. I'm just going to go to my couch and Netflix and chill and that's it. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I I mean, I totally get that. I think one of the things that I struggled with in the beginning was finding the energy at the end of my day when when I had a job, a full time job and still working on my business is finding the energy to still work on my business. That your early bird helps. (laughs) And also that you are very intentional about planning it seems like you look at what you have to do for your job and get a sense of how long it takes to kind of do everything that you're doing there and then when you have time and would you say when you have time kind of fit in just period time do you plug in time for just period when the time allows it or is it more of a routine and like they're set it's like pretty 
set for most days. Yeah. So last year, it, my strategy was I'm going to do just period when I have time and when I feel like it. Mm -hmm. And that did not get me anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think my year was very slow. I did make significant changes or I, or actually not changes. I made significant, I guess, milestones in building the business, but I wasn't putting it out there enough. I'd say the last quarter of last year, I kind of let it die a bit because I didn't have a structure. Mm -hmm. So this year or at the beginning of last year, I said, you know what, I need to start the year with the plan for just period with my job or else this is just not going to go anywhere. So this year I made it a goal to at least invest two hours daily, whether that was either sewing, like sewing product or doing administrative items for just period and administrative. It could be anything between improving Shopify, uh, my, my website or entering the tickets of the items that I, money I had wasted or putting together a video or editing anything that was administrative work. I counted it as a good improvement thing that I made during the day. And I said, it has to be two hours a day. Mm -hmm. I chose two hours because three, I, I think would have been excessive because I also have to spend time with my partner. I'm, I'm married. We don't have kids, but I guess quality time together is important for me. So three hours would have been excessive. Him and his job, me and my job, me just doing just period would have been just like, well, when are we going to see each other? When are we going <laughs> to talk? So two hours sounded fair right after I disconnected from my corporate job. I would grab my personal laptop, like literally I would just change laptops, bring, bring the other laptop into my desk and start working on just period. Or I would move to my sewing machine and just started like sewing materials, testing materials or whatever it was. And that also gave me the feeling of tran tranquility or reduce my anxiety that I wasn't doing anything for just period, you know, mm -hmm. because anxiety was uh, a big issue for me last year because I wasn't doing enough. Like I was stressing that I wasn't doing, but I also didn't have a routine for it. So mm -hmm. now I can check off, oh, I, I already allocated time for just period and I had already gave the two hours. So I'm good to log off. I'm comfortable to log off because I did some work for it. Mm -hmm. So it gives me like the mental health piece of it too. Yeah, yeah. That, that brings me to this question of how you imagined just period growing or building it. And what if you were still working within your corporate job and knowing that those two were happening at the same time. And as you mentioned, also spending time with your partner, which is still very important. I'm wondering if you had perhaps preconceived notions of where Jess period would be by a certain time. And if that ever was motivating or maybe challenging, knowing that you were still working full time, or were you simply okay with wherever Jess period was, it would be okay and that you would simply take your time? This is a really good question. So when I started, it was more of the idea, this is going to be a side thing. This mm -hmm. is going to be like my outlet in a sort of way, a, a healing hobby mm -hmm. for me. So my, my first expectation was, or not even an expectation. My first thought was wherever this leads me, it's okay because this is just a way of healing and helping others. But my job is still like my primary. If we, if we think about financials and things like that, I, I didn't think that I was going to replace my job with just period. And still now I, I don't see that, but because also there's still a lot of work to do in just period to, to get to that point. But also, I guess, cultural expectations that you have to have like that corporate job to be secure and like mm -hmm. without it, you're probably not going to get nowhere. So I think a mix of that is how uh, I started just period where I, I wasn't thinking like, okay, this is going to be a money machine. It's rather just going to be an outlet, a hobby, a way to help others in community and, and just that. But my perspective has shifted now because now that I've been out and the feedback that I'm getting, I am learning that it is a necessity. It is a 
a need that people like they they themselves are not thinking about it but when i tell them they're like oh my gosh that is so much needed so now my perspective is changing and it's wait a minute this is now no longer a healing thing for me it's probably going to become a healing thing for others and it just can't now be a, a hobby or a low-key thing mm -hmm. it has to transform in something bigger mm -hmm. and that's where i'm at right now kind of changing changing the scope of what just period can be mm, yeah all right when you think about how you started this and i love that you bring up that you realize that it's such a necessity because that is the i want to say epitome of a good business is you start something right and you perhaps started from necessity for you but you don't realize how big of a necessity which can also translate to how big the market the need the need in the market for it is until you receive that feedback and in yeah. a way you were maybe you knew maybe you didn't know that you were testing this <laughs> even though it came from a place where it was a you needed it as an outlet as a way to heal and now you realize oh actually this is a gap and there's a lot of need for it and you're filling that gap. So classic business <laughs> is going to fill that gap without you even knowing, right, that that was something that was needed. And now you're really trying to transform that and really fill that need. And so now that you're filling that need, I guess that's what is that what's inspiring you to continue to keep your job and 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 continue to just period and build build it up and is that what is motivating you yes so i i do very much love my corporate job mm -hmm. but besides bringing me uh financial stability and the things that that i want and need like food and housing or whatever it it, it is also what funds just period right yeah so yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean i still have to keep it very precious to my heart because it's helping just period in so many ways right because mm -hmm. i i personally did not ask for loans or not looking for loans i am funding myself and through my corporate job i am doing that so i don't have at least in the short term i don't have any plans of stepping away from my corporate role until i know that just period can sustain itself without the funds from just period or, or who knows if I win the lottery tomorrow, maybe. <laughs> you could. Or, you know, there's other financial financing options, right? You could literally pitch to investors. You have an entire product. You have a product line. You have already identified there's a need. And I, at least in from what I know as a menstruator, I don't see a lot of sustainable menstrual products in the market especially for, and I'm a big proponent, proponent of sustainability and the earth and keeping, I guess what, what is the word I'm looking for, but having businesses and products that are not harmful um, to the earth. And so, so I just think that you're hitting on, on a lot of different levels here. It's very, it's a sustainable product and you are, you are helping a, a community of people that didn't even know what they were experiencing, didn't have the language to tell them what they were experiencing when you're talking about period poverty, right? So I feel like, honestly, if you wanted to, you could create a pitch deck and find some <laughs> angel investors and they'd be very interested. And there's a lot of different ways to do that, right? But I think you're a unicorn and ha and just putting that in your little brain, just in case, you know, there's a lot of options. Of course, it comes with, you know, other things to be mindful of, right? They might want a percentage of the company and once it grows, once it hits, but right, these are sort of the things that sometimes I'm not sure that I think as brand new entrepreneurs, especially as women and women of color, I feel like these options sometimes we don't even know about them and we don't even know how big it can get and so while your full-time job is certainly a financing option and a great one there's other options too if you if you want to dream big or figure out how big jess perry can get you know 
So, but going into the question of the hour, and really, I know you you alluded a little bit to it in the beginning around waking up at 6 a.m. So if you have days that look different, go to both days, <laughs> you know. I want to know how you currently manage your day having both your full-time job and just period. And what does it look like from when you first get up in the morning to when you go to bed at night? <laughs> Yeah, so I, sometimes I even wake up earlier than than six a.m. I even say like five thirty. I was really in a habit of actually waking up at five earlier this year, and then immediately starting exercise and then um, coffee. But it was becoming unsustainable because I wasn't sleeping um, mm. enough. So now I'm like more between five thirty and six. The first thing that I do when I wake up is ask for my coffee. Both my husband and I were both early birds. He he loves coffee as well. He has a fancy coffee machine that I don't understand. So I tell him like, just give me my coffee. That's, that's all I need. I don't even know how he clicks on that little machine, but I have my coffee early in the morning. That's like my, my first thing. Like, don't talk to me if I haven't <laughs> had my coffee because it's just not going to go well. Right. Um, for me, it's also important to take a minute to actually get into my day so like i sit on my couch with a blanket i drink my coffee and then i slowly start pulling out like my phone i go on outlook i go on slack that's my my work slack and then i i start seeing like what is needed for me during the day do i need to book any any focus time for to get my job done because it does happen that sometimes we just have so many meetings back to back that there's no time to actually do the work so sometimes i book myself like focus time to actually do all my tasks i'm also like a checklist freak <laughs> so i have my digital standard i call it of everything that i need to do in my job from monday to friday and like i have a list of every day of everything that needs to get done and then i uh, slowly add additional tasks that come come about because as we know like things things change and I add those things like kind of onto my my agenda whenever I can especially like during the during 11 a.m to 1 there's a lot of meetings or workshops that happen related to just period you know I mean you're in the same networking events that I am at you know that mm -hmm. the meetings are usually during that time so I try to find like ways of how maybe I can invest that time and maybe replace it later mm. um, in the day. And I still count it as part of my two hours for just period. So instead okay. of doing it at the end of the day, I am plugging them in like during 10 a.m. or 11 a.m. or 12 um, a.m. And then I would say I replace that time later on if I haven't finished my at work. And really a lot of the benefit that I have with my job is that I no longer have a leadership role. So nobody reports to me and I am the owner of how I manage my time and how mm. my my tasks get done or if I can move things here and there to accommodate things for for just period. So I'd say I usually log on to work on my computer, probably like 6.30. I mm -hmm. come run some reports. I leave them running. Maybe I go back to the kitchen, have some breakfast, but then I'm fully on at 8 a.m. for mm -hmm. my corporate job. Okay. And then I might disconnect between, like I said, from the time frames of 10 to 1. Those are like usually the times, but I'll disconnect for an hour or maybe 30 minutes, depending on what's going on, and then connect again and then disconnect probably five, five in a day. And then I jump to just period activities. That That is mostly Monday, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Mm. On Wednesdays, I dedicate no time for just period. And I kind of have a faster day because that day I do need to go into the office to meet with my coworkers. Mm -hmm. So my day even starts earlier. I, those days I probably do wake up like at 5.35. I do a little bit of an exercise on my walking pad, 
get my coffee, get my breakfast to go. And then I draw, I commute to Orange County. And then in the afternoon, I'm just like very exhausted of the drive and really of seeing a lot of people yeah. that I, it's, it's hard for me to work on anything just period because I have been really consumed during the day. So Wednesdays, I try to not program things that are significant for just period unless I really have to. Actually, this week, there was a very important meeting on Wednesday and I was at the at the office. So what I did instead of taking lunch, I hopped on that meeting, but I was also multitasking, doing my job. You know, I was like mm. listening while I was working. So that's another, I guess, way to go for people who are entrepreneurs and are having to manage their corporate jobs. If if you if you're able to manage mentally multitasking, I mean, that's that's a great advantage, right? And then Saturdays and Sundays, I would say, is where I dedicate more time to just period. Mm -hmm. um, because I can like literally probably go all day doing just period things. And sometimes I'll just invite my husband to come in here so we can spend time together. I have a little studio here. Mm -hmm. And then I just tell him like, or help me cut fabric. And then we talk while he's cutting fabric. Or I'm sewing and he's just like in here or uh, just like things like that to spend time together. So my schedule does vary depending like kind of the day of the week and where I see a benefit of moving my two hours assigned to just period earlier in the day. Okay. All right. Wow. That sounds so nice too. The fact that you bring your husband in to just be in the presence of you while you're working on just period. That sounds really nice. <laughs> I usually when I'm working, I'm like, don't. Oh, don't come in here, just stay out, <laughs> close the door. Um, and there's days where when my husband, he, I, cause I work from home. So when, he, and he works from home. So we live in a very small apartment and I'm in the bedroom. He's out in the living room and I take advantage when he goes to the office. I stay here all day because two days out of the week, I work with my dad at our shoe repair business. And so the days that he's here, I go with him. And so there's only really one day that we're both here. Um, and then the weekends, but sometimes on the weekends when I am trying to get something out or whatever, I I have to do it alone. <laughs> so I like that you bring in your husband. You're like, let's spend time that he helps you even with making the product and cutting fabric. That sounds, that sounds lovely, actually. Oh, that sounds so nice. Okay. But it Sorry, it's, it's not that way like all of the time. Like when yeah. I'm doing administrative stuff, I do need him to <laughs> not talk to me or else I'm just going to get distracted, you know? It's yeah. just in tasks where I can just say, just come in or just watch me or I'm about to finish, just come and we'll start talking about, you know, how stuff or things that we have to do, but while I'm multitasking with just period. Yes. And uh, one thing I'm curious about is I know you had mentioned that you had like admin related tasks and then you had the creation of the product, right? Cutting fabric. Yeah. And so is that how you you compartmentalize the the tasks and how do you allocate or, or figure out how much time each, how much time to give the admin and how much time to give to to making the product? Yeah, so at the beginning, when I was really investigating and testing out the fabrics, I had to invest a lot of time in like sewing and sewing and sewing and sewing. Now it's just making the product because I've landed on like the fabric that I want to use that I feel comfortable with. So now I'm more, when I say I'm going to sew is more like, okay, have an order that I need to fill. I'm going to fill this order and I'm going to um, take it to the postal service or those times of investing a lot of time sewing and sewing and sewing endlessly kind of have halted where now it's just it's on it as needed. Mm -hmm. So now really my strategy has changed and now that I'm trying to grow has turned more on, I, I mentioned earlier, oh, editing my Shopify or, or setting up my website or whatever, kind of like that also has stopped and now my activities have changed. So to answer your question, I don't have set allocation for something that I'm always going to do is more as what does my business need at this time? That is what I'm going to um, work on. So for instance, right now that I've set the foundations of the business now, like my next step is 
building a client list or a, a newsletter or pushing marketing. So now it's more of what does the business need at this point? That's like where my attention is going um, to go into. Mm. Or if I'm participating in in an event or something, like how am I prepping for that really? So I don't have it like set in stone. I'm always going to do this Monday to Friday, Saturday or Sunday. No, it's like what the what the business needs at, mm. at some point. What I would say is that what I try to keep more structured is like my content. I try to plan my content during the week and then I try to film during the weekend because that's like what consumes more time that I don't feel I have enough time or the mental capacity to do it during the weekday that I just leave it for the weekend. Mm, okay, well, I, I really like this this strategy of kind of seeing in the moment what you need and going with that and, and sticking to that because I feel like sometimes there's a lot of overwhelm when you f look at everything <laughs> at the same yes. time. Um, and so would you say that that's sort of the best way to keep that overwhelm low for you? For now, yes. For now that I'm just starting, I think this is the way to go because if I try to work at, there's so many aspects of a business. So if I try to work at everything at once, it's just not enough. And since I'm doing everything myself, I think, yeah, it's I'm just going to get, it's going to have the contrary effect of the outlet that I initially started with. Then now it's just going to be a burden. But I do firmly believe that once Jess period has grown to a point where, okay, maybe we have our client base or like the website is doing good on its own or uh, social media is doing good on its own, then I do see a total need of structure where like, okay, probably Mondays you have to do this, Tuesdays you have to do this, each month you have to do this. Like um, discipline is important. So I, I don't want to give the wrong message like, oh, just do everything when think as they come no 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 don't i mean this works for me now mm -hmm. but in the long term i know that's not sustainable and not scalable so i would try to shift into a more standardized approach and given my background is in supply chain and i've been part of launching companies i know that e even though it's a small business i have to set processes in place and like a guidebook on how it would look like even if I try to get an employee on here like how are they going to know what fabrics to cut or how to package an order you know that will become important at that point is just right now it's not relevant yet yeah yeah I really love that I, I love that you said that because it, it sometimes the we don't know what we need to work on because it it's so new, being an entrepreneur is so new, building a business is so new that we think everything is important. We don't know where to focus. So I like that you know what's important now and what will be important later in the future and that you're aware of what, what that would look like, but that that's not where you're currently at right now. And so you sort of know how to hone in your time and your energy to what is the focus, to where your current stage of business is now. And so I think that's a very important skill to have because when you're brand new to entrepreneurship and and you're and the fact that you're in, in, in a corporate setting, you know, that's a very structured setting. And so when you start building your business and you're starting from scratch and everything that you're doing is it feels important it's hard to create a structure on that uh, on the business side of things how do you create structure there when you're doing it all yourself and so i'm glad that you focus on spe very specific things and where you're currently at and what you're currently needing and then as you grow making those assessments and taking the time to kind of figure that out as you go along because you're still moving forward. And I think that that's the most important thing because getting stuck when you're feeling overwhelmed is not a good feeling. So, yeah. yeah, so I'm glad that you said that. But before we start wrapping up, I do want to just kind of get into the the end of your day. So I kind of want to talk a little bit about after you log out and maybe have clocked in some just period of time, like what do you do at the end of the day? Do you have any 
wind down routines or anything that you do that helps you end your day? Yes. So something that I've just recently added, and I think it's the simplest of things, but it does keep me grounded towards me, towards myself, is doing my skincare in the night. So I've never, I've never been big like on makeup or anything. Like my mom, like she never used lipstick or like anything, anything in her face right now. Some of the makeup that I have on is like very, just like, you know, the lashes, the, what is it? The, the blush and Carmex. (laughs) And that's, that's basically it. So I've really never been into like the beauty or like foundation, anything like that. And in skincare, I just do the, just like the basic thing, like the, the cleanser, the toner, the moisturizer, the moisturizer, and oh gosh, the sunblock. During the night, I, I, do, I don't do it. But that is just gets me into such a great mood to just get into bed. Like I feel clean. I yeah. feel like it's like the perfect ending to my, to my day. Just like doing that. Like I feel fresh, ready to go to bed. Yeah. Okay. All right. And what, what time do you go to bed normally? Oof, I go to sleep early. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if so you wake I- up at 536, yeah. So I'm in bed no later than nine. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a, yeah. All right. Well, that sounds good. At least you get your full eight hours and or seven. I don't know. <laughs> I'm the same way. I go to bed around eight thirty nine because after that, it's really hard. If I'm up, I'm watching TV or doing something, then it's really hard for me to go to sleep at night. It's like my brain is, oh, we're, we're working. Okay, let's keep going. But I like to stop working around 8.39. Um, so, and I also get up er- early too. So um, that's why I'm asked what time you go to bed. Because if you wake up at 6, girl, I know you're going to bed at 8.39. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jessica. This has been so wonderful to get to know more about you and your day and what you do and just period. And I like to take the time for you to tell us where we can find you, how we can support you, and and let us know where we can get in touch with you. Yeah, absolutely. My website is justperiod.com and my Instagram and TikTok is at justperiod underscore. And you will see there menstruation education. But if you have any questions related to reusable products, feel free to DM me or send me an email. My email is also available there, but I'll say it here. It's support at justperiod.com and it's me answering everything. So you all know it's not a bot or a computer. I will answer everything. If you ever had a question or just wanted to share your period experience, I'd be more than happy to read it. I do get people who just like randomly share me like their first time period experience and I really like to hear it. And I like do respond to everybody who messages me. So if you want to do that, go for it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jessica. I'm so excited to share this with the world and to for people to get to know more about Just Period. And and I'm excited to see where Just Period goes. And you know, I'm here for you girls. So whatever you need, any support I can give, I'm happy to be part of it. So thank you so much for letting oh. us know about Just Period and your day. And hopefully there are people out there that can really learn about how to build a product and work at the same time. It's doable. Jessica's doing it. <laughs> and so I'm so excited to see where this goes. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to this special episode of the Be A Boss Coaching Podcast, the 9 to Grind series. I hope that you learned so much from today's entrepreneur and that you took away new insights and new ways to navigate both your entrepreneurship journey with your professional career. If you have any questions about today's episode or you are interested in learning more about our featured entrepreneur, come on over to the show notes and click on the links to connect. These women are powerful and are ready to give you their own tips and advice to help you in your entrepreneurship journey.
journey. And of course, you can also reach out to me. I am Bia. I am the founder of Bia Boss Coaching, and I help women of color, BIPOC, and queer entrepreneurs find their own confidence and their entrepreneurship journey like a boss. So come on over to BiaBossCoaching.com. Take a look at the website, what we offer, the free week that we have, and any other podcasts or blogs that you're interested in. You can even schedule a complimentary call. I can't wait to get to know you. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next video.